Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting something that's a little bit more cozy. I'm going to be painting a cup of latte. I'm not really a coffee person, but I find that hot drinks are nice and cozy, so let's just go ahead and sketch it out. I've shown you how I draw cups a couple of times already in my previous tutorials, if I'm not mistaken, but I'll just show you again quickly. Because this is a latte, I want the top to be shown quite a bit. I start with a rounded oval shape instead of a flat one. Then I'm just going to continue on down to paint the cup. If you want more of the latte art to show through, you can make the top of the cup more rounded so you see less of the cup and more of the latte art. Then I'm just going to add the handle on the side for the one on the right because we're looking at it from the top. The top part of the handle is going to be more exposed whereas the one on the left which is more of a side view, will have a clearer side of the handle. I also like to double up on the oval line to represent the rim of the cup. I think that the cups look cuter, but you can adjust the thick or thinness for your own painting as well. I don't know about you, but I like it when the cup of latte is a bit overfilled, so there's a slight bulge at the top. And to create that, you can just add an extra line on top of the rim of the cup, so the back of the cup is no longer visible. If you're looking at it from the top though, it's just going to be the same, which is why I actually prefer the first angle. Depending on the direction of where the latte art is going to be shown, I like to just indicate with a line to help guide me to draw out the mirrored pattern on both sides. I'm not exactly a coffee expert, so I'm just going to do simple patterns, but you can google this or if you're a latte artist yourself, you can draw out your favorite pattern. Just remember to keep it flat and on the angle that you've decided so the whole pattern looks nice and cohesive. As little decorations, I'm just going to combine the cup of latte with some thumbprint cookies filled with jam and also an almond. I chose these cookies because they're so simple to draw out. It's just like a donut shape with a filling in the middle and just play around with the different angles so you can decide how you would like to place them around the cup. For the almond filled one, I'm just going to top it with one single almond and it's basically the same but I want to create the almond shape in the middle which is slightly rounder with the pointed tip compared to the rounded jam fillings. Before I go over the colors and paint, I usually like to figure out my composition first so I've made up my mind before drawing it out on my watercolor paper. I think that it's always better to know what to draw so you erase less because you're not figuring it out as you draw because the watercolor paper itself I find is a little bit more sensitive compared to normal paper. If you erase too much you might damage the paper. I'm just going to speed this up because you might have a completely different composition. When I draw the final composition of my sketchbook I also realized that my cup was a little bit too big so I couldn't really add the saucer and just went with the napkin straight away but as you can see it looks really cute with the saucer as well so you can include that if you would like to. Another point that I forgot to mention is also that slight bulge at the top. I like to redefine it by adding a side so you can see the height of the froth but I'm just going to show you as I paint later on. For the colors, I'm going to be using my Holbein set. The colors are Yellow Ochre, Permanent Yellow Deep, Queen Red, Rose Matter, Burnt Sienna, Sepia, Cobalt Green, and Ultramarine Deep. Everything here is by Holbein except for the Queen Red which is by Daniel Smith. I'm going to start by painting the cup first. You can make your cup any color but I think a bluish cup with the brown of the latte will look nice. I'm starting with only two colors here which is cobalt green and ultramarine deep for the shadows. At first I'm just going to make random shapes following the roundness of the cup to make highlights and light reflections. You can see me painting with the cobalt green first because that's what I want the main color of the cup to be. And once I've at least covered a fair bit of the area, I then start to combine a little bit of the ultramarine deep with the cobalt green together to paint some shadow areas. I like to paint using a light consistency first as you can see so I can work slowly and build up the layers to figure out what sort of light reflection I would like to include in the cup.
Depending on your dominant light source, the dark colors should be on the opposite end. Mine is mostly coming from the left, which is why I tried to add more of the ultramarine deep or the ultramarine deep mixtures on the right hand side. I also tried to vary the value of the ultramarine mixture so the reflection doesn't look too flat on the cup. I'm literally just making stuff up here, just making sure as long as I include a lot of curves which supports the curvature or the contour of the cup, it should be fine but it'll probably be much easier if you have reference photo for this. For the rim of the cup, I like to make it a little bit lighter than the side that I've just painted. I also like to leave a white highlight to accentuate the shape and define the rim. As you can see, the colors are fairly similar on the side and the rim here, so I decided to go back with the cobalt green to line and separate the cup from the top and the side. I know that the cup still lacks depth at the moment, but I'm just going to go back to it after I paint the other elements so I can just balance the tones together. For the moment, I'm going to move on to paint the cookies. For this, I'm going to start with the colors Permanent Yellow Deep, Quin Red, and Yellow Ochre. I only need a little bit of this because I want the cookies to be nice and light so it doesn't fight with the value of the cup and I'm going to just use a light consistency of a mixture between permanent yellow deep and yellow ochre as the base color. As you can see, the color is very watery and I also like to leave uneven colors and also small negative spaces in random parts to start creating the textures. And I'm just going to do the same for all three cookies first because I need time for the base color to slightly dry off before adding the next layer of textures. If not, the colors are just going to mix with the base color and the textures won't be visible but it's actually going to be just like a flat wash with different colors. Now I'm ready to go back to my first cookie and for this I'm going to start incorporating a touch of the Quin Red into the previous mixture to increase the value but I'm also going to use this in a very light consistency because I don't want the cookie to be dark which is why I'm being very careful when applying this color. To create the texture, I use the tip of my brush to get small random strokes and I'm placing them mostly in areas where there would be less light so this can also serve as shadow to separate the light and dark parts of the cookie. I'm just going to show you a close-up here because the textures are really small so hopefully it's a bit more visible. I want the almond cookie to be slightly darker though in terms of color because I want it to be different than the jam filled one so I'm going to be adding more of the brown tones for this cookie but if you would like to make it the same tone as the previous cookies then just don't add as much brown as I did here. For the almond, I'm going to be using burnt sienna as the main color. I like to add a thicker consistency for the lines or ridges of the almonds. Then I'm going to fill in the rest with a light consistency of the color or you can also just clean and wet your brush and take some of the paint from the ridges itself. Again, I'm leaving some white negative space as highlights subtly but I'm also going to chase it with some sepia to redefine some of the darker parts of the almond. Next, I'm going to be painting the jam filling. I love painting jam if you haven't noticed. But anyway, for this, I'm going to first start by taking some Quin Red and also Permanent Yellow Deep. And I'm going to start with just the Permanent Yellow Deep with 
very very tiny bit of quin red to warm it up a little bit and I'm just going to paint the inside of the cookie while leaving some glossy highlights along the side for the jam. Then I'm going to take the orange mixture from my palette with a higher ratio of quin red to add to the darker parts of the jam. I'm going to use the same method for the next one but this time I'm going to start with quin red for a strawberry jam as the base color then I'm going to use rose matter for the darker red tone. Finally, moving on to the latte art, I'm going to use the previous mixture that I already had for the jam, which is Quin Red and Permanent Yellow Deep, but this time I'm also going to add a touch of Burnt Sienna to make the color slightly more brown compared to the bright orange. I like my brown to have a slightly warm yellow tone, but if you would like yours a little bit darker, you can add more Burnt Sienna or even a bit more Quin Red to make the brown more on the red side. Then here I'm just going to color the base, avoiding the white parts of the design. You can also use Masking Fluid for this, which I did have, but I only had the Masking Fluid with the pen tip. So I ended up taking way longer than if I were to just paint straight away so I decided to pull it off before it was completely dry which is why there are tears in my painting but I just kept painting since they're only small anyway. If you have those Windsor & Newton ones where you can apply easily with a paintbrush then that's probably a better option for this and it's probably going to be much easier but I didn't feel like it was so hard to just avoid those white areas because I painted this quite large anyway. I also left out a little bit of highlight around the top part. This is to indicate the slight bump of the overfilled latte. Then since the bottom part is already dry, I went with a darker brown which I just added some quin red into the previous mixture and I added a line for the shadow. Again this is just to add the 3D form of the overfilled foam. Now I'm just going to continue and fill in the rest of the brown areas and then I'll get back to you again once I'm done with this step. Moving on to the next step, here I want to add some darker tones for the texture of the design. Usually I see different tones of brown as the milk foam mixes with the dark coffee. I'm not exactly sure of the terms here, but I think those differences in color is what creates the different tones of brown. So in some of the white areas, I'm going to add a thin consistency of the yellow brown color and on the brown areas I'm also going to add some additional lines with the darker brown and for this I'm adding them as individual lines and I'm not really worried about mixing or blending it and I actually prefer that the design have those separate tones it just looks a little bit more realistic that way you can also use a reference for this it might make it a little bit easier so you don't have to imagine it yourself I'm going to add a darker brown for the shadow and for this I'm going to use a mixture of sepia and rose matter. If you would like to, you can also use this to paint on the design itself but just be careful with the consistency. The color itself is a little bit more muted due to the sepia so just keep that in mind if you want to reduce the saturation of your painting as well. Moving on to the final element which is the napkin, I'm going to use a maroon color for this by using the same dark brown mixture but I use a bit more rose matter compared to sepia in terms of ratio. I think that the dark tones look more cozy and it also complements the light color of the cookies but again you can also choose your own swatches and even add fun designs as well.
To separate the folded napkin at the bottom, I used a darker brown with a higher ratio of sepia and I'm just going to paint that all around the fold area. However, as I get towards the outer edges, I went back to the same red as the top of the napkin. I'm also going to add some shadows under the cookies as well as under the cup and I'm just going to use the same mixture like before with rose matter and sepia with a higher ratio of sepia just like the fold on the napkin. And last but not least, like usual before I finish everything off, I like to look at the whole painting and balance out the darker tones and shadows. So I decided to add some darker tones on the cup as well as extra textures and cracks on the cookies. Still doing it in a very light consistency though because I don't want to lose the light base color. And before I paint the cup, I'm just going to add some shadows under the napkins as well by using the leftover maroon color with added ultramarine deep, so it's going to turn into a muted purple color. As for the cup, I used the same mixture of the cobalt green and ultramarine deep with added sepia to darken and mute the blue slightly, and then I'm just going to place them as shadows to enhance certain areas. And that's it! This is the finished cup of latte with some thumbprint cookies on the side. I'm not a coffee person so I hope that I did it justice and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!